It's down again. That's another uh, deep dive cinema. Uh, and this time we're keeping in uh, with the title of what I wanted the series to be, which was looking at movies that aren't typically uh, talked about or uh, not no big budget things, no uh, nothing that's like very well known. Um, you know, very independent films, very low budget films, micro budget films, stuff like that. Um, the, you know, the first one I did was, of course, on Captain Marvel, and uh, hardly a low budget film, hardly a uh, film that's uh, lost or or forgotten, but uh, this one is kind of falls in a weird uh, a, a weird category because lots of people know about it, but at least the, in my circle, the people who uh, the people know about it have never seen it, and until today, I was one of them. Um, so, um, what we're talking about, uh, in 1999, uh, documentary, a very good documentary called American Movie came out, uh, following a guy from Wisconsin, uh, Mark Borchardt, uh, who was making his, uh, independent horror film called Coven, not Coven. COVID. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's a very good documentary if you if you uh, like like to see someone who's like really devoted to the uh, to his art. You, I mean, this this guy goes out of his way to make this movie happen. Um, but also from what, I mean, it becomes pretty apparent in American movie that uh, he is not very good at it. Uh, you see scenes being shot in, in uh, the, at least when I watched it, I was like, oh, this guy could be like the next, her, the, the next uh, Edward D. Wood. He, he is, just some of the stuff was very hysterical, um, and he put you know he put his heart and soul in it, much like Edward D. Wood did when he was making his movies. Um, so uh, all these years uh, after seeing American Movie, I had never seen Coven, and I've talked to friends of mine who've also seen American movie, and they love it and everything else, but they've never seen Coven. Uh, finally, they track it down and watched it today, and maybe my expectations were too high, or maybe my expectations weren't low enough. I, uh, like I said, I was expecting like. Uh, something that was on the level of badness of a plan nine from outer space uh just you know so bad it's good you know, it's just hilarious and I, there are points in this movie that are pretty hilarious um the opening scene uh actually has one of the more memorable um sequences that was captured in american movie where you see Mark, who stars in the film as well, running down this road and a car pulls up to him. And uh, I think it was his grandfather um, who delivers the line, it's all right, it's okay. Yeah, you have to see it. it, you, it, it I, I can't recreate it with... with uh, the amount of hilarity and that I could put into it. it it's just, just, just so funny. And it's really a classic moment. Um, 
But it, for, for one thing, I thought this movie was going to be a longer than it was. It was 40 minutes long. That is a problem, and I will tell you why soon. Um, but Coven tells the story of Mark, who is Mark's character, who is a, a writer. He was also an alcoholic and a drug abuser. And uh, after and uh, undergoing some kind of writer's block, and at one point he accidentally overdoses and ends up going to uh, like a 12-step group, uh, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous type group. Um, but then you find out the group isn't quite what it appears to be. Um, they say they want to help them, but they're, they do very odd little things, um, and very cryptic, they say very cryptic things in, in front of him, um, and, you know, in the meantime, he, uh, you know, occasionally went out in the woods trying to, you know, get some writing done, we'll see these strange figures in ropes that are chasing him, um, and, you know, uh, trying to grab him, beat him up, whatever, um, assault him. And uh, these keep happening all through the movie. And then he, uh, but, it, and he, he's trying to, he tries to, trying to write, trying to stay sober. Doesn't quite succeed in either one of them. All the way through the end and uh, and then at the end there's a big con confrontation with uh, some people from the main people from the four people from the group um, and uh, well, to uh, um, there there's a big a, a big fight uh, something very strange concerning the flask of what might be blood, I'm not sure, uh, and and then it ends, and uh, and I, I'm I'm a big fan of of ambiguous endings in horror movies as long as it serves a purpose. Um, it follows had a very ambiguous ending, but it built to it, and I think it earned it. Um, Hereditary had a uh, somewhat ambiguous ending, but it earned that. It earned that shit. Um, I'm not sure about the ambiguous ending in in Coven. Um, I'm not sure what. It, I mean, quite honestly, it seemed to meander. It seemed like it, there wasn't really a point to it. I was, um, unless the point is that 12 step programs are evil and, uh, um, and that, they, and that they don't work, um, and are a waste, are a waste of time, which is possible. I mean, if you've seen American movie, you know that Mark Borchardt uh, was a pretty heavy drinker through th through that film, and that was a documentary about him making this film about an alcoholic. So, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the message is here. Plus, even though it started with a bang with that with with the, the grandfather in the car. Uh, saying that beautiful, beautifully intoning that line. Um, quite honestly, I fell asleep eight times during this film. I was bored. It, it was boring. Um, and what's surprising is that it's cut so tightly every 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 scene is is, is cut very tightly one, one scene moves to the next very quickly um 
and uh, there are p parts where sh the, the scene should have been allowed to linger a little bit to, to kind of, I mean, he's, he's going for some kind of effect, some kind of, uh, um, some, uh, you know, some kind of feeling of dread, but he cuts it too soon and goes to the next scene uh, very quickly. At times also, like he'll cut from, uh, you know, from a character saying some dialogue and immediately cut to a different scene with another character saying dialogue. And it, it kind of, it's kind of jar jarring because if you're trying to reorient to this new place and realizing that the second person is not answering what the first person said because it's an entirely different scene. So it's a little disorienting. And it happens a lot. And after a point, I, 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 I guess it's a little tiring, but it's also like there's a lot of talking. There's a lot much going on in this movie. And when it does, um, it happens quickly because it's, it's cut very quickly. I think there was only one scene that kind of lingered. And it was boring because there was nothing happening in that scene. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I had I, I was dozing off and then waking up and rewinding to where I last remembered what, what, what I was watching. And I did that eight separate times. In a 40-minute movie, that is not good. That's like dozing off every five minutes, really. Um, to be fair, it was all in the middle. But still, it was just... just um, that that's not good. That's not good for a good movie or a movie trying to be good, and it's not good for a so bad it's good movie. Um, but I mean, he put a lot of heart into it. Uh, Bart, no one, no one. It, it, I mean, it has all the right elements. The people cannot act, uh, and some of them just chew the scenery. Um, it, with their bad acting, Mark Borchardt kind of does that, that too. He just like kind of plays angry guy all through. But if you see, I mean, basically he's playing himself. Really, if you remember, again, if you watch uh, American Movie, he's pretty much the same character. Um, it, uh, you know, it kind of a letdown. I, I, I'm, you know. I'm probably going to watch American Movie just to kind of do a palate cleanser on this because, I, 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 you know, I was a little disappointed on this one. Uh, I expected something that was a little more over the top. I mean, everyone is, but it's like everyone is so uniformly bad in this movie, with a couple of exceptions, and you don't get to see them enough that... Um, it, it becomes like static. It is like, you know, in soothing static. You can just fall back, fall asleep, you get bored. So, um, I'm going to be a little kind. I'm going to, you know, if I, out of a five star system, I'll give it uh, one and a half. Um, because it, really, you know, he, he did pour his heart and soul into it. He finally, he got it out. Uh, you know, you can watch it now, even though, I mean, I found it on YouTube, which is amazed the, the hell out of me. Um, but, I mean, if you, uh, if you saw an American movie, then you probably, and if you're curious, then go ahead and watch it. But if you're looking for a horror film that makes sense, um... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me um or uh you know even a horror film that's like even a, a so bad it's good horror film yeah best skip this one um you know and move on and and i guess i'll give a the uh, you know i'm giving it one and a half also because at least every shot was in focus. And uh, 
unlike Frankenstein's Bloody Nightmare, which one day I will talk about on tape, um, or on video, or whatever this is, digital. Um, yeah, that, uh, at least it was better than that one. Let's just say that. <laughs> so, uh, again, this is done. Uh, hopefully we'll be doing another one of these about another uh, really old forgotten gem. And I'm going to hopefully do one on a gem next time. Um, don't count on it I'm being about Frankenstein. I'm not, I have not had good uh, uh, luck on finding, you know, Franken uh, low budget Frankenstein pastiches yet. Um, but, uh, you know, until then, you know, enjoy and seek out some, uh, some independent film out there. You know, there's a lot of good independent horror films out there. Uh, just waiting for someone to watch them. And uh, talk to you soon. Bye.